Hi guys, this is Jessica Williamson here and I'm at the New Filmmakers Los Angeles Film Festival at the world famous Sunset Gower Studios. Today, thanks to Movie Maker Magazine, I'm going to be presenting you with some of the most talented up and coming filmmakers hitting the 2009 festival circuit. So let's go check it out. Hi, it's Kate. Leave a message. Hi honey. Hi Jasmine, thanks for coming on the show today. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to sum up the film in one sentence, what would that be? A man, a woman, a conference room, two cell phones. Sometimes connection is just a ringtone away. What can I tell you? That's my log line. Hi, Joe. Hi. What were the biggest challenges in making this film? For one, that was my directorial debut, so I'd never done that before. Um, so it was a constant learning experience, and um, when you're doing something for the first time, I think, I don't know if I'm speaking, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but for, at least for me, I was constantly questioning you know, my decision making and making sure that I was making the right choice because I'd never done it before, so I had nothing to reference it on. And having to rely on favors and a lot of people just doing this out of the kindness of their hearts and for the love of film, you know, I really had to be patient and understanding and tolerant. It will find you. It will catch you. It will hit you with a spoon. Again, and again, and again. I wanted to ask you, the special effects in it were amazing. How did you do this? First off, I just want to say that, you know, the name of my film is The Horribly Slow Murderer with the Extremely Inefficient Weapon. And it is the story of one man's encounter with what could be the most relentless murderer of all time. And it's basically an epic fake movie trailer, 10 minutes long, for a movie that is purportedly over nine hours long. So do you want to tell me a little bit about how the project came about and what inspired the story? This film really, for me, came out of my father's desire when he bought the Chinese junk. He wanted a boat he could have in Alaska that had a galley and a head so he could go out for two or three days at a time and stay on the boat. The boat that he found happened to be in Seattle and he bought it and he needed some help in getting it to Valdez, Alaska. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity to take the adventure of a lifetime with my father and also to shoot it and make a documentary out of it. My father is completely at home in the middle of this vast and circuitous water wilderness. I'm so lucky, lucky that he has given me that same gift, pure contentment with nature. I love him so much. And as a director, especially as a new director, how important do you think it is to be well-rounded in what you know? Knowing how to shoot, knowing how to do sound, learning how to market it, that's sort of where I am in my filmmaking process. It helps me a lot. art piece or a narrative? I almost consider it like a painting, so maybe more like an art piece, um, because it's abstract and just kind of free form and there's, there's not exactly a narrative, but I feel that people take their own narratives from it and kind of get something from it in their own way. And I like to leave that mystery up to the viewer and the audience to just kind of take what they want from it. And that way I think it's like a moving painting. What was the scale of the figures and what were the props like? Did you have many props or just one? I think they're probably about maybe 10 inches tall, 12 inches tall. Uh -huh. 
about this big and um, the sets are about four foot square. It really allows you to just kind of work in this world, you know, be God for, <laughs> for a few months. What would you say is the coolest piece of equipment available to new filmmakers today? Uh, well, we use a Steadicam in certain sequences downtown. Uh, we mainly shot handheld and we didn't really put sticks down in the action sequences. We actually only did that during the office, which we could kind of control the environment. We had a, a short window, obviously, with light and not getting busted because, I mean, you know, when you're pushing a car down an alley and having somebody crash through that, you know, you're just waiting for somebody to call the cops. And the Steadicam I had mentioned uh, is, a, is a wonderful tool because you can now get this Steadicam Merlin for like under three grand, which is capable of doing the same kinds of shots that look the same as the $60,000 Steadicam. And now, I'm not a big fan of gratuitous camera moves, like when a camera is just dollying behind a light for no apparent reason, just to look artsy. The biggest technical challenges I had were just the fact that I was a crew member as well as a filmmaker. And so sometimes when things happened, I'd have to put the camera down and deal with them. As far as the electronics and the elements, it really was just a lot of diligence and making sure the camera was in a watertight box and cleaning it regularly and being sort of very careful with it. Last but not least. What other advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers who are wanting to shoot a project in this genre? You can make your film look like a million bucks by finding locations that have a lot of depth and have just some kind of beautiful um, compositions in them. And it's interesting, you know, a lot of indie films are shot with a, a wall right behind uh, the, the actor and it just looks more like a student film. It looks like they're in this tiny little sound stage, unlike this grand sound stage we have here just stick with it. Junk Dreams is certainly not the most marketable film out there. It's, it, it, it's not the kind of film that people are knocking down my door going, oh my gosh, I have to have this. We're going to sell it. We're going to make so much money. I mean, I've worked on, on 30 or 40 films, and it's a film that touches me so deeply. It's a film that I really, truly care about. Mm -hmm. And I'm not always going to have an opportunity to work on a film like that. So if you get the opportunity to work on a film that inspires you, that makes you feel like you can say something to the world of actual value, take that opportunity and run with it. Thanks for watching and be sure to check us out next month as New Filmmakers Los Angeles and Movie Maker Magazine partner up to bring you the best emerging filmmakers from all around the world. Take one.